Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about how I set up my notes on the iPad. First, I'll be going over the paper and pen settings and then I'll move on to my note taking structure. I am using GoodNotes 5, so these settings might not transfer over to other apps other than GoodNotes 4. In terms of the paper template, I exclusively use the A4 size that comes in GoodNotes 5. I've tried A3 as well, but I always prefer A4 because it resembles the size of a regular piece of paper the most. With that said, GoodNotes does already come with lots of templates. So they have plain, dotted, squared. They also have ones that are specifically for the Cornell method, which I will be talking about later in this video. I did choose to make my own template that has much darker paper, and I'll put this up for download in the description box. So my trick is that I don't write on plain paper, but rather squared paper. Squared paper is what keeps my writing super neat because I can actually write in straight lines, and I also have guidelines if I need to draw boxes and whatnot. So the question of what pen size I use. I have a few pen sizes that I like to use. In my most recent notes with the dark paper, I've been using 0.2 millimeters for the body of my notes. For my headings and titles, I typically use 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters. However, the trick with my titles is that I never actually write them in the large size that they are. I always write them out small and then I use the lasso tool to make them bigger. You might find that you actually have more control over how your title is going to look because you're working over a smaller area. So what I've noticed is that if you're using white paper as opposed to dark paper, you actually have to bring up your pen size by about 0.5 millimeters to get the same thickness. It's not the most noticeable difference, but it's definitely something to consider if you want to maintain that consistency. This is how I've been structuring my notes for my final exams this past semester. This is the Cornell note-taking method. Normally, these notes are written during lecture and the summary part is done after the lecture. So this is how I do it. These notes have two columns, one where key concepts, key points, words, prompting questions, and important notes appear. And the other one on the right side is where your regular notes are written. So on the left column, I'll call this the recall column. Ask yourself questions when you're structuring your notes. What is X? How does Y work? What does X, Y, and Z mean? That way, it's kind of like you're forming a complete thought and having a conversation with yourself rather than just writing X, Y, Z and scribbling some notes next to it. You can obviously use some color coding techniques. For the dark paper, I just simply change the text color, but if you're using white paper, you can just simply highlight over the text. I do have a video on how to color code as well, which I will link right here. Now my way of doing it is a bit modified in that I don't focus so much on writing the summary section. The summary part is probably one of the main points of the Cornell method, but I think that the summary part works better if you have less content to study. Essentially, in the summary part, you just write two or three sentences, maybe even one sentence to summarize what your notes above talked about. More than anything, I found that the column organization is actually what's effective for keeping your brain focused on a certain section or concept. All the notes related to that section or concept are within your vision and you don't have to scroll, scroll, scroll vertically. I don't know about you, but for me, it's easier to read sideways as well than downward. So your brain doesn't really get cluttered up reading these notes. This method also seems to be very helpful for doing active recall. So a neat trick is that if you have prompting questions in the first column, you can actually cover the notes on the side to test yourself when you're reviewing to see if you know the answers to these questions. So you can definitely take advantage of the active recall element in this system. So overall, this is how I've been structuring my iPad notes. I found it to be actually very successful and I hope that you guys can try it out and maybe it'll work for you as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching, guys.